Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady. Where in today's episode, OP tells a tale about the time their family came to a super duper entitled Karen's rescue, only to have her cause so much trouble. And it doesn't end well for her. And guys, I know what some of you are thinking. Where the heck have you been for the last three days? Guys, I had strep throat, the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. Like, it was like swallowing glass shards every time I swallowed. Like for three days, I couldn't eat, couldn't drink water, like it was it was bad, but I'm back, okay? And I hope you enjoy the crazy, crazy Karen stories today. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and the email link for story submissions will be posted right here. Let's dive in. So when I was around age 23, my favorite outfit I owned was a red t-shirt and a pair of tan corduroy pants. More than once, I wore that outfit on a shopping trip to Target. So my mistake never dawned on me until inevitably a customer stops me and asks me some question or other. Generally, I just tried to be polite and point them in the direction of an actual employee. My favorite time though was the time I got chewed out by a manager. So on this day, I was browsing Lego sets and texting on my phone, just minding my own business. Occasionally someone would enter or leave the aisle, but I paid them no mind, so I really didn't notice that there was anyone close by. Then suddenly, a voice right behind me loudly says, Are you kidding me? Hiding in the toy section on your phone? You've gotta be kidding me! So I spun around to find a very angry, late middle-aged woman. The woman holds out her hands and demands, Give it to me. At this point, I just stared at her, thoroughly confused. She then snaps her fingers and says, Give me your phone now. And when I still didn't oblige, she actually made a grab for my phone. Seeing her do that, I jerked my phone away out of her reach and then asked, Are you crazy? Her response was, Don't you dare speak to me that way. You know good and well that you can't have your phone out while on the clock. Give me your phone and you can have it back after your shift. If not, you can go home right now. At this point, it just dawns on me what her mistake was and why she made it. I was wearing my red shirt and tan corduroys. I then say, Oh, oh no, I actually don't work for you. The manager says, Excuse me? I say again, I mean, I don't work here, I don't work for Target. The manager then responds, not after this, you won't. Never have I dealt with such a disrespectful. It was at this point I interrupt her and said, ma'am, I do not work here. If I work here, what's my name? At that, the manager silent. I then say, if I work here, then where's my name tag? How long have I worked here? What's my shift? Surely we would have worked together before this. You would know me. The manager then sputters and says, I, I, I don't. Well, I can't be expected to remember every single one of you. It was at this point I gestured to my clothes and say, Lady, this was an unfortunate accident on my part. I do not work here. The woman just stares at me for another beat or two. She then crossed her arms and squinted at me skeptically and said, You are lying. I then threw up my hands and said, Whatever, I'm leaving right now. I then turned to make my way to the front of the store, and was that the end of it? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. The woman followed me the whole way, demanding I stop and follow her to her office. I then walked right out and went straight to my car. Now thankfully she didn't follow me beyond the store's entrance, and I can just imagine her confusion and frustration as she went back and tried to figure out which one of her employees that I was. I only wish I'd thought of submitting a complaint to corporate about her at that time. Guys, if I was OP, I would have followed her to our office just to watch the expression on her face when she tried to look me up in the system. Like, oh my goodness, that would have been amazing. Like, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but in a big retail store like Target or Walmart, I'm pretty sure it's possible for managers to not know every single employee, right? Like, there's gotta be hundreds. I think, or dozens. Somebody please let me know. Okay, so this isn't exactly an I don't work here lady, but more of an I don't go here lady. So I'm a youth worker and I care for young people ages between 13 and 18 years old, who are in out of home care for various reasons. But most of the time, they've been removed from abusive families. I have a specific client that I work with a lot who's verbally aggressive and has a lot of anxiety around school. So this particular day was her third or fourth day at a new school, and she asked me if I could walk her to her classroom because she was feeling anxious. This is something I do a lot for our clients to actually make sure they're going to class, and it's never been an issue. I'd also been to this particular school many times with another client. So I'm walking her to class, and she's walking really fast ahead of me with her head down when a teacher stops me. 
Now I'm a 30 year old woman and I was wearing jeans, a black shirt with Biggie Smalls face on it, and a pair of Vans, so I can understand that my outfit skews younger. Now I do that because I find if I dress cool, I have a better success building relationships with clients as they see me as more of an older sister, rather than dressing in my normal clothes and coming across too professional. So the teacher, who's a Karen, says in this incredibly loud, condescending voice, Hey, why aren't you in uniform? Now I tried to quietly say I don't go to the school, so the other students don't hear me because obviously my client doesn't want to broadcast it that she's in care, and has a carer walking her to class. But the teacher isn't having any of it, she wasn't listening to what I was saying at all. She starts lecturing me in the most horrible voice, she was literally wagging her finger and saying, This school has standards and you are making us look sloppy. I'm giving you an out of uniform slip and you're gonna get detention too. Now I'm really annoyed by this point, but I'm also in shock because I'm 30. How the heck can she be mistaking me for a school kid? I have a forehead wrinkle and the beginnings of crow's feet, how is this possible? I very firmly say, hey, there's no need to speak to me that way, I don't go to the school. And of course the woman doesn't let it go, she gets louder and says, if you don't go to this school, you need to leave, we don't allow other children on this property. All the while getting louder and more upset at me being there. My client, who's been standing there getting more and more agitated, decides to set her straight. And at the top of her lungs, she screams, She doesn't go here, you effing dopey c-word. She's my carer. The teacher immediately turns bright red, and every student's looking at us now. The teacher mumbles something about visitors needing to sign in, and I told her we had, and we kept walking. My client was so embarrassed, but her little outburst instantly made her popular with the other students, because she told me later that that teacher is absolutely horrible to everybody. My client became more comfortable being at school after that, and was spoken to by a teacher about inappropriate language at the school, but she wasn't punished. Now guys, as much as I dislike that it had to get to the point where the teacher was called those names, I'm actually happy to hear that the little outburst gained the students a few more friends, made her a little bit popular, and best of all, boosted her confidence and made her feel comfortable being at the new school. So yeah, the moral of the story is if you feel uncomfortable at a new school, just pick a teacher that everybody hates and call them a dopey c-word. I'm just kidding, don't call anybody any names, please. Fluff does not condone name calling or violence on this channel, please do not call anybody a dopey c word, it was just a joke. Okay, so this happened a long time ago, more than two decades ago. It took place in 1998, but it still sticks in my memory, even among the crazy things that happened that night, and that week even. So in 1998, not everybody had cell phones yet, and this will matter later. It was January, in the dead of winter, and we had a storm that day, and the storm was intense. It was alternating between heavy rain, freezing rain, very intense wind, not quite a hurricane, but strong enough that it was breaking off small branches on trees. It was dark, like full dark, the storm was completely blocking out the light of day, the clouds were thick and deep, it was scary. The clouds must have been thousands of feet thick to be that dark, they were massive clouds, totally full. The storm had lost some of its speed since it hit the coast, but none of its fury. Power lines started going down. On that day, I'd been visiting my parents at their home. My little sister and little brother were visiting from college. So we were sitting in the kitchen having appetizers and I was cooking on the antique wood burning stove with my mom. And then it happened. We could hear them even through the sound of the storm when they came around the corner and lost control on the sheer ice. The car spun out of control and it hit a tree hard. The family was lucky that they got caught by trees in the snowbank because the river is right there. Even though a lot of it was frozen as it was winter, it runs fast, so the ice never gets as thick in some places. A car could pierce right through it. My family immediately springs into action, and we know they're gonna need help getting out of the snowbank at very least. Or first aid, or more at worst. Dad grabs the first aid backpack, and we go lend a helping hand. My dad was a logging camp medic at one time, and he had dealt with very serious, life-threatening injuries in the past. We all run to get our heavy snow gear, and we put the rain gear over top. Also heavy boots, boots for arctic expedition. We then put on our ice climbing gear. On the way out, we grab shovels and pylons and flares out of the back car, and then run out to the garage. My little sister takes snowshoes and she heads to get the neighbors as there could be more cars, as this is the only road if you're going deeper into the countryside in this direction. So fast forward getting to the wreckage. We greet the people who have crashed. It's a family of four. We check if anyone's hurt and they're fine, just a little shaken and scared thankfully. The car is stuck and they don't have anything to get it unstuck. While mom is talking to them, I've already started shoveling and my brother beside me is shoveling too. 
There's already a crust of ice on everything. My dad starts setting up pylons, weighing them down with dirt, sand, snow, and gravel on the side of the road. Then the next car comes, flying at full speed. We dodge out of the way, climbing up and away out of control of the full-size sedan. It careens straight into the first car, and luckily, mom had gotten the family to get out of the car. Now, this wouldn't be the first year we had a pile-up, and it wouldn't be the last. The corner was killer. It was right at the bottom of a long hill, and another corner in the opposite direction, so you can't see it coming. There are signs, but people ignore them, especially overconfident locals who take the corner at high speed. Today though, the ice was clear, it was getting thicker, and people were gonna keep crashing here. My dad and I start helping them out of the car. These people were strangers, again, and it didn't matter for our reaction though. The family was actually hurt, but it wasn't too bad. The size of the vehicle had somewhat protected them, it was a big boat of a thing. Only the wife had an injury that really needed attention. She had smashed her head against the window and she was bleeding, so my dad rushed over, pulled out gauze pads and surgical tape from his first aid pack. It was at this point my little sister arrived with two sets of neighbors. They had shovels and flashlights, but digging wasn't going to be enough anymore. The snow was coming down hard and thick. One neighbor had a cell phone and he called 911. I didn't hear any of the conversation. We were getting the family up the hill to our cottage. Power was already out at this point, so there was candles and wood stoves or gas only. Anyway, mom and dad have started laying out the injured as cars keep arriving every few minutes and crashing, even though we've set up road flares way up the road and cones. There was no chance we were getting people unstuck at this point. We were just getting the injured as good of treatment as we can until the actual paramedics and emergency crew can arrive. The problem is, they're swamped. It's a small municipality. There is a hospital and it does have ambulances, but only three, and they were already on calls. They said they'll get to us as soon as they can, but the highway further up the way from us has already claimed lives. At this point, we're thinking, holy crap, the storm has already killed people. There are now a lot of people. I never did get a good count of how many. Neighbors from further away have come out to see what they can do to help. This is Canada. We help each other in the winter or everybody would die. I was helping our latest guest into the cottage. It was getting really full in here, and we were gonna have to start bringing people up the hill to our home soon. And then it happens. Hurricane Karen. Now, in her defense, she was no doubt under stress. We all were. We had invited her inside just like we had the others. The cottage was really full of people, so not everybody had somewhere to sit. All the beds were being used by injured people, as a few have been seriously hurt in the crashes. Thankfully, the coroner had not claimed anyone's life yet. It was at this point, Hurricane Karen walks up to the neighbor with the cell phone, who was on call with a local tow company, coordinating all the members who were here that needed towing. The dispatcher was very understanding that we would need several tow trucks and promised that we were in line. Out of nowhere, Hurricane Karen loses it. She screams, Hey, give me that phone right now. I need that phone more than all of you. Now, no one knew who Karen was. At this point, a few of the families and random people who had crashed were actually people we knew. She didn't even give him a moment to answer it. She grabs for it and screams, Give it to me. You are giving it to everybody. Give it to me because I need it right now. She went right to 11 in 0.5 seconds. And the neighbor's screaming, Whoa there lady, calm down. I'm talking to someone to get tow trucks here to help everyone. It was at this point Karen sees that I've arrived back. She turns to me, points her finger in my face and screams, You, you work here. Make him give me that damn cell phone. I say to her, what? Lady, I don't work here. I'm just trying to get help for everybody. Please calm down. There's no reason to yell. I'm sure he can lend you the phone when he's done with the emergency people. Look, there's a lot of cars piled up and people hurt. The whole time I was talking, she kept trying to interrupt me. It was at this point my dad comes out of the bedroom area. He had blood all over his clothes and he looks super tense. But Hurricane Karen wasn't done yet. She starts screaming, F you. Do you know how important I am? I'm the local political person from a neighboring municipality. I'll have you fired. Do you know how much power I possess? Hearing that, I ask, Lady, are you serious? We just helped you out of your car and brought you into our home, and you're behaving like this? Hurricane Karen screaming, You can't treat me like this. I have to call my son. I tell her again, Hey, you can calm down. You can call your son when he's done. The woman's not listening to me, and she keeps screaming, I'll get you fired. Get me your manager. When I'm done here, nobody will have jobs. I then look at her with a deadpan stare and say, You can't fire me. Just stop. I don't even have a manager or a boss. She then screams again, You have to give it to me. Out of nowhere, my dad interrupts her, full rage shouting. 
and he says, We'll give you nothing if you don't stop this right now. I brought you into my home, so be cool, or you're going back into the effing storm. Is that what you want? Now, I'd like to say that my dad is normally a nice guy, but at this point, he wasn't kidding. He was about to fully kick her back out into the storm. My dad just turns around, walks back to the people who were hurt. His anger was implacable. It was probably almost as scary to Hurricane Karen as the storm. Though, thinking about it in retrospect, the fact that he was covered in blood was probably the reason she just shut up and didn't say anything else. She just sat down and shut up. The storm was by this time raging even more intensely than it had been. Trees had been coming down extensively, and nobody wanted to be out there. She got her turn to use the phone eventually. Unfortunately for her, one of the people in the cottage had been one of her constituents, and Hurricane Karen lost her job. Nobody died under our watch that night. The road was closed, not only because of the corner, but because of the trees that had fallen in the road up the hill. Everyone eventually got towed, and some people went to the hospital. By the next day, the power was out across the eastern seaboard, more than a thousand miles north and south of us. It took weeks to recover and get back to normal. Altogether, there was more than a hundred thousand car accidents in that one night. There was 26 people dead, and countless people newly homeless. It was the biggest disaster that I've ever lived through. Guys, what a wild, wild story. And yeah, I think in that situation where everybody's hurting, the worst thing you could possibly say in a room full of others is, do you know who I am? I'm more important than all of you. Like, yeah, I can understand that that Karen was in shock from the accident, and she just wanted to contact her family to let them know what was going on. But it doesn't give her the right to place her importance above others, because she's an important political person. Or was an important political person. So yeah, if you guys want to read more about this crazy night, it's called the 1998 North American Ice Storm, and it's wild. Like, the pictures you see on Google is, is crazy. Okay, so I'm a 28-year-old doctor that lives in India. My specialty is in clinical chemistry and laboratory medicine, so I usually don't interact with patients much anymore. This happened during my specialization training, and it still makes me shake my head. So my colleague and friend in another department suddenly developed seizures in the middle of the night. Her husband contacted me, as I often helped her before they were married, and I was taking a midnight stroll in the campus as I was on call for the lab. So I went to emergency and got all of her paperwork ready. My friend arrived the same time another family involved in an accident arrived. Since my friend was still seizing, my junior asked if I could place an IV for the time being, because they needed to look at the family involved in the accident while the neurologist arrived. No problem, the emergency was extremely busy and I was ready to help. I did everything for my friend. One of the nursing officers hands me the anti-epileptic drug while her husband stayed by to make sure she's comfortable. Then suddenly, a crazy mother Karen taps me on my shoulder saying, Hi, can you help me? I say to her, Hi, sorry, I'm not an emergency department doctor, but I can guide you to whom you should see. She then looks at me and says, Aren't you a doctor? I say, um, yes, but I'm not a part of the emergency department. I'm here for my friend. It was at this point she says, So, since you helped your friend, can't you take a look at my child? I say to her, I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't take responsibility as I'm not a part of the emergency team, and I'm not even posted here. When my friend gets better though, I'll ask her to take a look. The woman then says, But you helped your friend. Help me. I tell her, yes, because the team is busy with an accident. And since it's my friend, all I did was set an IV so she'll be stable until they can come check up on her. Now, the woman wasn't listening, and she says, So why can't you help me? I'm tired of waiting, and my child is uncomfortable. At this point, I'm tired and say, Lady, I'm not an emergency doctor, nor am I on duty. I can't help you or take responsibility should something happen. Please wait for the emergency doctor to be free. Why don't you go to the registration counter? They'll ensure someone looks at your child. Again, she ignores me and screams, I can't leave my child alone. Just go take a look at him. I need you to look at him. He fell down and he's crying. She then grabs my arm and drags me, saying, You will see him right now. My friend's hubby was pulling me away and blocking the mom, saying, You'll leave her alone. She's not a part of this team, so stop harassing her. It was at this point that Karen screams, Help! Help, they're assaulting me! So a nurse charge finally runs in, asking what's wrong. I knew the nurse charge, as we're a part of the same Christian prayer group, so she asked my side first. I explain about my friend, and how the Karen was forcing me to help her son when I can't. The nurse tells her, Ma'am, OP is a doctor, but she's not posted, nor a part of the emergency team. We need her here to help her friend, because we're super busy, but that's it, she can't help you. The woman screaming, Stop giving excuses! You don't want to help me! You will help me now with my son, or I'll complain. 
I then tell her to go ahead. I then turn away as the nurse was dealing with her as the neurologist arrived. And I thought that was it, but I was wrong. As my friend got better and I was helping another nurse change the IV bag, my hand was suddenly pulled, nearly causing me to pull at the IV. The mom had come back and grabbed me again. At this point I was really angry, so I scream, What the heck? You again? What are you doing? You nearly made me rip out her IV line. The crazy woman at this point is screaming, This. This is the doctor who refused to help me. I want her license revoked. It turns out she had dragged the emergency medical officer, who's the senior doctor watching over everything to complain. The medical officer blinked, as she knew I didn't work in this emergency department unless I was posted here, which I wasn't. The officer tells her she doesn't work here. To which the Karen says, yeah she does, she was fixing that woman's IV. The medical officer says, yeah, she's a part of the hospital but she doesn't work in this emergency department, she's just a doctor, she was helping her friend and that's it, she can't look at your child unless I tell her to. Of course the Karen doesn't believe him and she's saying, stop lying, why are you covering for her, she's the worst doctor ever. It was at this point my friend's hubby tells the officer to take the lady away, as his wife isn't well and she's been harassing me the whole time. The officer then turns to the mom and says, I saw your child, he's fine, we're swamped today, especially since we had an entire family admitted here. If you continue to create a ruckus, we'll ask you to leave and maybe even ban you. The woman then argues and tries to say it was my fault, and the officer firmly said, you have two options, you either leave them alone or you leave. So the woman left us alone, grumbling as I heaved a sigh of relief. My friend recovered, so we decided to have her discharged and have her checked up in the morning. As we were leaving, we saw the mom glaring at us and mouthing swear words at us, but we ignored her. Friend's hubby apologized and I told him not to worry as none of it was his fault. The next morning, the story had spread to the whole hospital and my guide told me to be firm and not entertain people who were like the Karen. Some days I'm glad I'm in laboratory medicine and not in the emergency department. Oh yeah, I can only imagine all the entitled people in the ER all the time guys. Like I've read a few stories on here about Karens thinking that their kid's sprained wrist is more important than a dying patient, but hey, entitled people will always be entitled, right? And guys, that brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you missed the last episode on the channel, I know it's been a few days since I've been gone. I've had strep throat, like I said, I couldn't talk, but now I'm back, okay? The episode was posted a few days ago. Something about a Karen, I'll post it right here. Um, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.